Cool. I like the videos like sure this. Kind of Where's Pika? To start. That way you can adjust it if you need to. Now that I've got the pieces welded in that are going to support the back of the glass, uh, we're ready to weld in the pieces that are going to actually act as the slot that will hold the glass in place. Uh, you want to make sure when you weld these in there. Pika wanted to watch the video too, man. Are fairly square I'm with sorry, them Pika. across the front. That way, when you get that piece of glass in there, one of them isn't uneven and doesn't let the glass drop into place properly. Yeah, right there, and just like the rest of the project, you want to weld uh, both sides. What's up, guys? Roan like Jimmy here, and I'm back with a reaction video. This was recommended by my good friend Because John Can. That is his YouTube channel. I will show you here in a minute. And I'll also put his link down in the description. He just uh, he does like cool how-to videos that I think you guys will enjoy to watch. So without further ado, let's just get right into this video and just let me get, let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comment section below. And then yeah, go ahead and sub to his channel as well because he does these really cool videos. So this is his channel right here because John can. And today we're gonna be checking out this video right here ballistic glass he wanted me to uh, do a reaction on this so so i just decided yeah let's do it it looks really cool in the picture there well, hello youtube how are you today looking beautiful as always thank you so a couple months ago i decided to take my gopro out for some cool action footage doing a little shooting and uh, sitting off exploding targets and it didn't go real great i put that footage right here for you to see let's check it out Yo, imagine if you were just sitting there. You would have got wrecked by all that wood. It broke the glass for your GoPro! What? This is really cool. I like I like these how-tos. Yep, the GoPro almost lost its life that day. Uh, it soldiered on and it's doing pretty well. But it got me to thinking, could I build a ballistic glass or something to keep the camera safe so that we could get the extreme shots Okay. And whatnot. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to build ballistic glass and a box to hold the glass and the camera so that we can do dumb stuff. Sounds good. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Okay, bye. You guys okay, subscribe to his channel. We're going to start off with a piece of quarter inch plate steel. This is what we're going to cut the pieces out of to make the box that the camera goes in. I wanted my box to be four inches deep, four inches tall, and six inches wide. So I used a paint marker to mark out uh, the lines where I needed to cut with the plasma cutter. Keep in mind when you're building something like this, you want that the box plasma to be cutter slightly is no larger joke. than the camera you're going to use. And we have a little bit of room to position the camera and make sure everything's going to be in focus and set up just the way you want. For the base of the box, I went ahead and cut the piece of steel about two inches too wide. I used this as kind of a ledge to hold the glass in place once we got it built. All right, we've got all the pieces cut out for the box. I'm just going to take the grinder and kind of smooth out the edges uh, where I cut with the plasma cutter. This is really cool. Take off any paint or oxidation that might get in the way when we go to weld. Now that everything's cleaned up, ready to weld this thing together, do yourself a favor and uh, use some light tack welds to hold the box together before you get crazy and start putting huge welds on this thing. That way if there's something wrong with it, you can kind of take it apart. In the end, I wound up welding the inside and outside of the seams on this thing. I wanted it to be stout since we were going to be shooting at it. We're going to need some kind of brackets to hold the glass in place on the box. I wound up using some angle iron from an old bed frame to make a slot that the glass could drop into on the front of the box. What I found it worked best for me was to use narrower pieces of angle iron on the inside of the box to kind of brace the glass. That way it had something to uh, recoil against when it got hit. And then I used the larger pieces of angle iron on the outside to hold the glass in place. Now that we've got these pieces cut to length and have ground the excess paint and whatnot off of them, okay. they're ready to be welded in. This is really cool. I like so videos you like make this. Sure you just kind of tack Where's the Pika? To start. That way you can adjust it if you need to. Now that I've got the pieces welded in that are going to support the back of the glass, uh, we're ready to weld in the pieces that are going to actually act as the slot that will hold the glass in place. Uh, you want to make sure when you weld these in there... Pika wanted to watch the video too, man. ...fairly square I'm with sorry, them Pika. across the front. That way, when you get that piece of glass in there, one of them isn't uneven and doesn't let the glass drop into place properly. Yeah, right there, and just right like the rest there. of the project, you want to weld uh, both sides of the seams. That way this thing is really strong. We don't want it coming apart uh, when we shoot at it. All right, we've got those welded on there. Now what I'm doing is welding a steel pipe coupling to the bottom of the box. As you'll see later on in the project, this is what we're going to use to support this box. 
uh, it will work really well for our stand because it'll allow us to thread different pieces of pipe into the bottom of this and change the height of our camera. And it should look kind of like this. At this point, we're ready to build the door for the back of this box. Uh, I wanted to put a door on the back of it. Now we have something happened. It got spun around. It would have some protection uh, against flying shrapnel or whatever whatever may happen. I like this music, John. Box out of a piece of eighth inch plate. It's a little lighter than the rest of the steel we used, but it should do the job. I'm just going to use this heavy hinge to attach the door to the box. We're going to cut a little strip of metal. That way we can build a tab on the bottom of the box that will go through the door. And we can use a clasp to actually lock the door shut. Here I'm just using a die grinder to cut a slit in the bottom of the door. This is where the tab is going to poke through that we're going to use uh, to lock the box. Okay, we've got that all cut to size. And we're ready to weld the door to the box. Once again, light tack welds to start and then weld it like you mean it. I want to take a second right here to remind everybody to wear proper safety equipment. Gloves, uh, hearing protection, eye protection, whatever is required to keep yourself safe. The door is installed. Now we're going to weld the little tab onto the bottom of the box. It is going to act as part of... I didn't know he knew how to weld and stuff. That's so cool. That's dope. I was centered and in the right spot. Now we just want to make sure that the door opens and closes properly. Then we're going to drill a small hole in the tab on the outside of the door. This is where the little clasp will go that actually holds the door shut. Now we've got the box put together, uh, I just went ahead and cleaned mine up with a sanding wheel, then cleaned it up with a little bit of solvent, and put a little bit of paint on it. Uh, I went with orange to make sure that it was nice and visible. I didn't want anybody to accidentally shoot my box. That okay, looked, the box that, is pretty that much was really done, good. But we need to build the stand that the box is going to sit on. I built this out of lumber to try to save on weight. Uh, it shouldn't be taking any severe impact, so... you know. Scrap wood or whatever you got laying around should do the job for this. The main thing to note here is that I'm going to attach a threaded pipe flange to the top of the stand. Uh, once again, we're going to be able to thread different lengths of pipe into this thing to change the height of the camera. In the end, the camera box and stand should look about like this uh, with the uh, different pipes to adjust That's the really cool, John. Alright, now that we've got the box and whatnot built, we're ready to move on to the more interesting part of this project, uh, building the ballistic glass. I'm going to start off with a sheet of acrylic and a sheet of polycarbonate and I'm just going to cut them to the size that I want to fit into the box. I kind of learned the hard way that you wanted to use a coarser saw to cut this material. Using something with fine teeth I tended to just melt the, the acrylics or the poly and make a mess of things. I found that a skill saw worked really well for the larger cuts. When I got down to trimming the smaller stuff, just a regular hand saw worked pretty well. You want to make sure that you brace either side of the material with a piece of wood or something. That way it can't flex back and forth. This is especially important with the acrylic. It will shatter. The poly is pretty tough and flexible, but the acrylic is not. Now that we've got the pieces cut to the proper size, we're ready to start laminating this all together. Uh, you want to clean your surfaces really well to make sure that your epoxies can stick to everything. You Makes don't sense. want to sand anything because that will make your glass foggy. You just want to make sure that you use some glass cleaner or a clean rag and make sure that it is all wiped down. I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear Epoxy that for this Gorilla project. Glue I found that it was pretty really strong. strong. It did a pretty good job of holding uh, the materials together. When you go to apply your epoxy, you want to kind of spread it over the surface of the material. That way it gets to the corners and whatnot and definitely use a little more than you think is necessary. You want the stuff to squeeze out of the edges of your materials when you go to press them in the vise. So what I wound up doing is using two pieces of acrylic and one piece of polycarbonate uh, and sandwiching them together with the poly in the middle. I wanted the acrylic on the outside because it is a little more scratch resistant than the polycarbonate. The poly tends to be pretty soft and scratches really easily. Then I just put it between two pieces of wood and squeeze it in the vise. That way the epoxy would flow out to the edges and we would get a nice even coat. Since the epoxy is still liquid at this stage, uh, our materials can kind of move around. You want to take a second to get everything lined up, and then you want to clamp your vise down just as hard as you can. You really want to squeeze this stuff tight. Ta-da! Ballistic glass. That is this so cool. This is only cool. three layers thick, and you can go through and layer it as thick as you want by adding more layers in a similar fashion. Uh, I, I made most of mine five layers thick because I wanted it to stand up pretty well, but you can do however you need to. Whatever makes you happy with this, uh, go ahead and do that. I want to take a second to point out that even the best ballistic glass isn't completely bulletproof. It's more of a bullet resistant situation. Uh, that being said, this is not meant to protect anybody or save anybody's life. 
don't stand in front of this and let people shoot at you or anything like that. <laughs> Perfect. No problem. And all we have to do is Dude, that's super the cool, inside John. the box. What the heck? And we are ready to go and try this thing out. That is really cool. You guys subscribe to his channel. He does this all the time. Makes cool videos. Okay. We shot the 22. And the glass is broken. I don't think it would take any more than that with the three layers. Now we're going to try the five layers and we'll shoot it with the 40. Full metal, with a full metal jacket and see what happens with that. Nice. <laughs> right? That's so Same cool. Same kind of deal. It blew it all apart, which is what's supposed to dissipate the energy. The acrylic fails miserably and it's supposed to shatter, but our poly holds up. Okay, so we're set up at about 50 yards and, uh, Buddy Andrew here is going to take a shot and see how we do with the five layers with the 762 by 39. This is really good camera work, too, it John. Blew the acrylic apart and it pierced the poly. It went through both of them, but if we had one more out there, we'd probably be able to stop it. It was full metal jacket, but if we went seven ply stick instead of the five I think we would stop it doesn't fit in my uh, contraption but to know that it'll stop 40 Smith and Wesson I think we're good right we're gonna start doing uh, we're entertaining stuff now let's go <laughs> that thing took off like a rocket it reminds me of rocket league on that one Nice. Oh. Yeah, that toilet is gone. <laughs> this toilet seat, this, the toilet like lid seat, <laughs> flipped perfectly. <laughs> An old lawnmower just got annihilated. Look at that. Holy! That thing took <laughs> took some air time for sure. Whoa! That was better. That was badass. Houston, we have landed. That thing took flight, and that thing is heavy. <laughs> up, up, and away. There you go. The ether can just, yeah. Nice. That slow mo is is nice. That looks cool. Shooting at the Pontiac. <laughs> Let's go. That thing is what? That thing is gone. Nice. With the train going by, that's so cool. There was a van. <laughs> Holy cow, man. That is awesome. Thank you for recommending this video, John. I'll definitely do more. Dude, that there is no van anymore. That thing just got annihilated. It's like doomsday. The slow motion, yeah, that, yeah, you do not want to stand near that. That would be all bad. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I had a blast making it. Huh. Literally, I, I see what you did there, John. I'm so see. inclined to just follow me on Instagram. Link in the description. If you have any questions about this project, please leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you. That's awesome, John. I like I like your content for sure.
that that was really really cool so yeah you guys let me show you his channel one more time because John can I'll put the link down in the description so you guys can find it instead of having to type it in yourself but he has all types of cool videos like this I will do some more reactions on these and uh, I'll also talk to him and then we'll see what we can do for you guys but yeah you guys subscribe to his channel he's at 78 right now let's try to get him to a hundred and um, man that was awesome I can't wait for the next video John that, that was really cool that was really cool so yeah you guys thank you as well like John said taking the time to watch this video so link will be down in the description it let me know what you guys thought about this video and um, yeah in the comment section thanks guys rolling out